someone recently browsing out there on Apple website, right? And I see that Apple has released a new M1 Mac Mini 10 gigabit ethernet option that wasn't available when I actually bought mine. And why, if you guys are still in the return window, why you guys should actually cancel that order or return yours and buy this version instead. Let me go ahead and break this all down to you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. Apple just released a 10 bit ethernet option that you guys can actually buy on their site for just $100 more. But see kid, why is this even a big deal and why does this even matter? Well, before we actually dive too deep into that, at first, I want you guys all right now, comment down below how many likes is on this video at the time of you guys watching it. Because to me, it's always dope to see when people are actually watching this video. So go ahead and do that for me real quick. All right, so see kid, why is this a big deal and why should I actually return mine or sell mine for this model right here? Well, first off, I gotta say, this option is the better option to buy, but it also may not be for everybody. What do I mean by this, see kid? All right, let's talk about it. First off, 10 gigabits per second ethernet port allows you if let's say you have multiple computers in your home and let's say you have something like a Synology NAS server or something like that where your kids are storing their homework, they're storing music files, photos, videos, and you also are storing the same photos, videos, or whatever, as well as your significant other, you guys are storing the same. But each computer needs to be able to access that data. Well, not having a fast ethernet option outside of the standard could cause some bottlenecking as well as some data traffic jam because of the need for higher speeds to be able to access and transfer that data within your home network. And as you guys know, as time moves on, files are gonna get bigger, applications are gonna get bigger, and you're gonna need something like this to be able to access your larger storage NAS units for files, whether it's for family or whether it's for a project team because it's gonna become a necessity. Now, the most noticeable difference that people will see is gonna come down to the speed performance, right? And just a speedy connection overall. Now, due to its reliability, as well as the lack of interference, it is a dream, trust me guys, it is a dream to have when it comes to quick data transfer speeds because I'll tell you guys right now, I got the standard one. Now, when I'm transferring my video files to my Synology system or just trying to access it, it literally takes freaking forever. That's a whole nother story. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, CK, I don't think I need all of that. And honestly, you probably would be right because this is more needed for people who have a team that are using a server to be able to access data from that one central location. If you are someone out there that don't really feel like you would need this model, then you might be right. Now, one downside to the updated speed, right, is price. Now, pricing for the updated M1 Mac Mini is $100 more. Now, when you look at it, you may be saying to yourself, well, it is $100, I might as well just go ahead and add it on there because if I need it in the future, I got it. I will say this if you're that person. For the most part, you've pretty much been getting by with the standard ethernet connection speeds, then it may not be needed for you to actually get this. Now, for me, this might be something to look more into because I do have a home server that's called the Synology DS10 1019J that I use to be able to store all of my media files onto. I can see that this is a need for me now because right now it's a pain trying to transfer as well as access my data from it because it's just so freaking slow, which is why I do everything on my USB-C hub that has an internal SSD that's built right into it that is clutch because the speed are way quicker and it also looks good on my setup. Now the site that I actually use to buy this hub and I recommend you guys buy it too and that is from the Apple Nest. Now they have a bunch of other Apple accessories and stuff on there and I recommend I mean, you guys definitely check them out and pick this hub up. I will link that for you guys down in the description section below because if you got an M1 Mac Mini and you don't have this hub or if you don't have the wall mount, then you are just essentially just missing out because it is really, really dope. So I'll go ahead and make sure to link all of that down in the description section below for you guys to be able to check that out. Now, would it have been nice to have this option right out of the gate like last year? Yes, but y'all know how Apple actually do. You know how they operate. They release things over time and in short, release something new or an update to an existing model, making you feel like you just got the short end of the stick. But in all reality, the current M1 Mac Mini with the standard ethernet, literally for most people, is just fine for the average user that is not using some sort of a NAS home server where multiple people are accessing that through your ethernet connection. Now, another thing that I recommend that I always say when you guys are pricing out your M1 Mac Mini, and that is to buy, to buy, to buy the lowest storage option possible, or don't go any higher than 512 gigabytes from Apple. The reason I say this is simply because you can buy the hub that I mentioned to you guys in this video with two terabytes and will save you guys $400 and $500 and put that money right back into your pocket. You know, who don't want more money in their pocket? Understand this is where Apple makes their true money for those people that don't know what they are buying and seeing it and saying, I need that when you really may not actually need it. And again, I will link that down in the description section below where I go to get my stuff for my M1 Mac mini build. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Just wanted to do a quick video showcase
showcase and that Apple now has a new 10 gigabit ethernet port for networking. That combined with the silicone chip will just be a crazy, crazy combo and providing a lot of power while also being able to keep a machine performing efficient as well as cool at the same time. Make sure you guys comment down below on this video how many likes at the time of you guys watching it. Now, I talked about the M1 Mac Mini having it for over 120 days now. It's actually a little bit more now, but if you guys wanna check that video out, that video starts right now. See y'all over there, squad. <laughs> I was wrong, so let me go ahead and just jump right into it. No way, none of that. Now, the M1 Mac Mini after having it for four months since its first day of release is absolute fire, but I've been having some issues with it that I really need to tell you guys and just pretty much just get off of my chest. Now, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 in this video. The first thing before we actually get into all of that, whoa. So it's been about two months now since I caught the M1 Mac Mini. Wow, no pro fresh in the aisles. 16 to 8 gigabytes, tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good, if it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see, hold up, performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go, let's go. No overheating, got grace the jigs up. Best desktop, I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through the shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar live through the stereo. <laughs> what I want you guys to do right now, comment down below the number of likes on this video, literally right now. Like, go down there right down there comment down below how many likes is on this video at the time of you guys watching and keep watching because i got a surprise for you guys towards the end of this video there's a whole lot of good things when it comes to the m1 mac mini but i want to go ahead and start off talking about some of the issues that i personally face with the m1 mac mini first thing that i have to start off with is for some reason i don't know why it is but for some reason i'm getting these weird error messages when i open up my iMessage app what's basically happening is every single time that i open it up and i start replying back to a text message or whatever it's throwing up this crazy error message and then it just instantly closes the app so for the first time it did it i went ahead and just restarted the machine and i was like well maybe it's like a glitch but man it kept doing it over and over and over and honestly to the point where i went out on google i started going to forums blogs reddits i mean you name it I went to it to try to figure out a solution and uh, couldn't find one and it kind of got me tight. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm laughing right now to kind of hide the pain. <laughs> so there's that issue, right? Then there's the next issue, which is mainly on me. I'm not going to lie. This is probably not on Apple, but I should have gotten the 16 gigabyte option. But I was being me. I was being cheap C kid and not wanting to max out the RAM. Listen to your boy. Save up the extra ducats and upgrade it to the 16 gigabyte RAM option if you guys haven't bought one already instead of the 8 gigabyte option. Reason being is that if you do a lot of video editing like myself, a lot of labor intensive stuff, and I always have multiple programs and different things open at one time, especially on two ultra wide displays at that. And when I'm editing things like Final Cut Pro, editing videos for you guys, I noticed that it's not as smooth as it was when I had it on day one when I first bought it. And at first it was cutting through the timeline like butter, but after having it for 120 plus days, it's still good, don't get me wrong, and I'm able to edit from it and different things like that. I don't feel like the same way I did when I got it on day one when it comes to editing videos on the eight gigabyte RAM version. Now, again, I said that that's more of my poor choice decision on my side as well as my frugal mindset. And I learned my lesson from that. Don't get me wrong, I have. That is why the M1 iMac is gonna be here in the studio here pretty soon for me to test out the 16 gigabyte option. Cause yeah, that, yeah, that, y'all know why. <laughs> so recently guys, they had some updates that they've pushed to this machine since my last video that I did. So I went ahead, I took the USB dongle out that I have that connects my MS keys as well as I have the Logitech MS master mouse and as soon as I did it I didn't notice any issues with mine at all I actually edit this entire video you guys are watching right now I edit it with Bluetooth only not using a dongle at all so it seems to me like this has been something that has been resolved from Apple which I'm actually hyped about. Now, the next thing that I have to talk about with you guys is it's still limited on the number of ports. I, I can't lie to you guys. Now, it does work with my current setup, not gonna lie, but that is because I had to go out and buy something extra, which is the Cal Digit USB hub that gives me extra ports that I needed because I have a dual monitor setup as well as monitors with ports on the back that 
pretty much most people have, which is either a display port or an HDMI port. Most people out there don't really have monitors with Thunderbolt ports on the back of them of their existing monitors, unless you wanna go out there and spend the bag bag because those monitors cost a bag bag. So on the back, you only get two Thunderbolt ports on the Mac mini instead of the four, which I felt would have been much better and more useful to users like myself, because let's say you wanna do dual monitor setup, right? Just like the one that I just talked about. Now using the Thunderbolt ports, then just like that, you guys are already out of USB-C ports to leverage on your machine. Now, on my current setup that I have right now, I use one display port, and then I also use one HDMI port to be able to connect it up to the Mac mini. But if they just had two HDMI ports, then I could have just used that instead of having to use an external system to have a display port go out. Because again, I don't have a monitor with a Thunderbolt port, and then the back of the Mac mini doesn't have another HDMI port or a display port. So I'm forced to go buy something else in order to get my dual setup with my M1 Mac mini. 